Welcome back. I'm in the studio with the Deputy Minister of the Department of Finance, Dr. David Masondo. And I said just before the break that there are key things that Treasury must deal with to make sure that all the initiatives that we discussed earlier on do materialize and that the benefits reach as many South Africans as possible. But energy is one of the major, major areas of concern in South Africa. And when we talk energy, you put ESCOM at the center of it all with a high debt of more than 450 billion rands and still having load shedding going on in South Africa. What are the new ideas that government is working on that will solve this problem once and for all? ESCOM is a, one of the biggest risks uh, for not just for our finances but also for the economy. Because if ESCOM continues to uh, undersupply or fail to provide electricity to society, our economy will be in trouble. I mean, the last uh, first quarter um, uh, of this year, in terms of the economic performance, the GDP is declined. Because remember, our GDP declined by 3.1 percent and one of the reasons was the uh, undersupply for electricity by ESCOM. What we have said is that putting money into ESCOM is not sustainable. Uh, the ESCOM's problems are not just from the point of view of debt. ESCOM needs and the Minister of, of, of Public Enterprise has also released a document to this effect. ESCOM needs to sort out its cost structure uh, because what is driving the cost in ESCOM is a primary sources of energy ranging from coal, diesel, and there have been conversations with the coal uh, miners that they, we need to start to have a conversations on the contracts, long-term contracts that we have with ESCOM that uh, the coal that they basically use to generate electricity because the ESCOM cannot continue uh, with those uh, contracts. They're quite expensive. They're generating a lot of uh, uh, cost, increasing the cost structure of ESCOM. So insofar as the cost structure is concerned, ESCOM has to look at that and making sure, including the labor costs, uh, ESCOM has to look at that other assets that are adding, that are becoming a burden on ESCOM's ability to regenerate revenue. Those things have to be looked at. And the document that has been released by Department of Public Enterprise, working together with the National Treasury, has articulated on the things that need to be done. The business model as well, um, we've spoken about this issue about unbundling of ESCOM into generation, into three companies, generation, transmission, as well as re uh, distribution. Um, the Minister of Public Enterprise has already indicated that there's already going to be an interim board for the transmission company of uh, ESCOM. I mean, there's the problem of cost overruns at uh, Kusile and Medupi. What, what is the cause of that? And why is it difficult for ESCOM management and even government for that matter to manage these cost overruns that lead to additional money being put into the business, not only via debts, but also government itself having to uh, come in and, and put extra cash the, the for projects that are never completed on time and no, no contribute anything to um, energy generation. Uh, cost overrun is a big problem for, in fact, we are in this trouble of ESCOM largely because of cost overruns. Because what has happened, I learned, and I must still verify this, that there was an invoice uh, which was uh, given to ESCOM, it was 27 billion. But uh, when government uh, got in now and just look, scrutinize that invoice, it came to 2 billion. So someone was trying basically to cheat government by making sure that government pays for things that we should not be paying for, uh, Pratim. And um, so we, we are looking at that insofar as the cost overruns uh, are concerned because they've generated a lot of problems uh, for, for, for ESCOM. Why is this thing happening, the cost overruns? I think it could be two reasons. One, it could be that there's collusion between um, the uh, people who are generating these invoices and people who are paying these invoices or it could be that the people who are supposed to be verifying these invoices in order to determine whether 
what is entailed in an invoice, it's what has been done by the contractor or the people who are helping with the built project. It's either those people, they don't know how to basically verify and do uh, thorough work, due diligence on the, those invoices that ESCOM, uh, I mean, those contractors are giving to, to government. So it's, a possi it's possible that it could be the incapacity, incompetency from our side as government, or there is some kind of collusion between the two. But you know, Deputy Minister, I'm thinking about ESCOM is an example, but the, 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 the state itself overall seems to be behaving like ESCOM anyway in terms of the amount of money it spends on, on its employees as well as mismanagement of a whole number of uh, projects, whether it be at national level, at provincial level, or even at uh, municipal level. And water is an example of uh, things going wrong within departments, for instance. I, uh, how is government going to set an example of how things should happen at state-owned entities? Yeah, look, there, there are um, instances of great success insofar as program and project management and execution. Uh, you can cite how train, you can cite the um, building of the road here in Gauteng, because you know there was a lot of congestion before this uh, Gauteng uh, 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 road program, this, which was built or funded through the ETOLs. So there, ha there are instances where, as government, we have demonstrated that we can execute, we can implement uh, uh, projects, uh, infrastructure projects. Yes, indeed, there are instances where there are failures in so far as uh, project executions of projects. Year in, year out, there's returns of money to National Treasury uh, by municipality. I mean, recently, some of the entities like CIFA I learned that they return money to, they, they could not spend the money, the money that are supposed to be utilized for SMMEs, supporting SMMEs in order to grow our economy. And as government and the leadership of uh, the government under President Cyril Ramaphosa, we've made it very clear that there has to be consequence management. If we don't perform as an official and if we don't perform as a politician, there has to be consequences insofar as your performance Which is concerned. Which begs the question. People say, well, the talk is there. Uh, Dr. Masondo, we hear this. But we haven't seen it. I mean, there's, there's talk uh, day in, day out uh, before uh, Deputy Chief Justice Zondo that people took so much money. This happened here, that happened there. But they've not seen any arrests being made or any monies being recovered. So how can members of the public have confidence that this talk will translate into action sometime soon? No, no. It's, uh, I mean, the Zondo Commission, there's work going on. And I think all of us, we can't wait for arrests to take place, uh, but you've got to do it in such a way that there are no comebacks. You don't arrest people, and you didn't do your thorough job in terms of investigation, and those people who should have been arrested, they get uh, scot free because you did not do your proper job. In terms of consequences, I do think that uh, we are beginning to see people being uh, withdrawn from their positions of responsibility. One example is Etegwini in which uh, government and the ruling party feeling that uh, the some kind of underperformance in so far as some of these entities are concerned and institutions are concerned. Etiquine is one example in which the ANC itself took a decision and said we can't go on like this, someone had to be recalled. The Auditor General every year reports that there's a lot of irregular spending and wastage going on and corruption actually to put it directly how much do you think corruption costs the south african state given where we are with the with the with the budgetary shortfalls for instance uh, and also the fact that there are many businesses out there big ones that operate illegally in the country and do not pay taxes two things here it's one of corruption and its impact on the state and the fact that there is no collection whatsoever taking place um, in terms of the illegal businesses that operate in the country. And that's a, a, a criminal matter for that matter. No, it is. It is, Bratim. I think uh, you, you are aware that uh, SARS has gone through uh, serious institutional challenges associated with what is called state capture. And government has since appointed a new commissioner who is trying very hard to re rebuild the institutional capacity of SARS. Uh, to assist uh, those uh, 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 taxpayers who are willing to pay. 
and follow those ones who are trying to avoid paying tax. And there's a lot of systems and mechanisms to enforce and encourage people to basically pay tax. Because you're right, corruption caused the poor, caused the growth uh, of, the, of the economy. Because if people are corrupt, they're basically diverting resources that should be, diver I mean, should be directed to the poor, to the growth-enhancing activities uh, of our economy. So if we can arrest that corruption, uh, we should be able to contribute and make sure that we grow our economy. You're confident we'll see any difference anytime soon in as far as that is concerned? No, no, there is already actions that is, that is being taken, and I'm very happy that uh, the uh, Audit Act, it, it has also been changed for people uh, to, be, to take responsibility, accounting officers. So if there's some expenditure which is wasteful, irregular, and, 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 and uh, fruitless, there has to be consequences insofar as the accounting officer is concerned. It's low by now. That it's no longer that the, audit, uh, uh, the auditor general, the AG, will come and audit you and nothing happens. You continue with wrong practices. Uh, the Public uh, Audit Act now requires uh, consequences to be enforced. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. David Masondo, for having been our guest. We appreciate And, of course, there's a lot to ask, and it's an ongoing conversation, as we all would like to see the economy grow and create opportunities for yeah. all South Africans. Thank you. No, thank and you. after the break, we'll be turning our focus to the current water crisis facing the country.